G'day everyone, my name's Michael Taylor and welcome to another E46 vid. Today we're going to be working on the E46 because my X5 project is kind of in a bit of a holding pattern at the moment. So that leaves me a good opportunity to get some more work done on my E46. But first, we've got a bit of a problem. The problem I've got is space. You see, the more I get done on my E46 and on my X5, the less space I've got in this one and a half car garage. Well, actually, it might be a two car garage. But as you can see, yeah, you know, I've got a fair bit crammed into this garage. I've got bits from the E46, bits from the X5, I've got my R6. Space is becoming a real premium. So I've got to be really careful how I manage this project. What I'm going to work on today is getting some of the interior out of the E46. And the reason I want to get that out is because I want to get the subframe out so that I can get the subframe reinforcement kit welded in. So to avoid damaging any of the interior, I'm going to take the whole lot out because it's all got to come out anyway. I've then got options where I can store it to give me some space to then get the subframe out. It's a bit of a juggling act, but I think we can manage. So in here somewhere is my subframe reinforcement kit, which I got from ECS Tuning, but it's the Turner Motorsport subframe reinforcement kit. Here it is. Now I got this a couple of weeks ago and I put it in the rack. And this is the kit here. I really like the Turner Motorsport one because they've modified it a few times over the years and that ensures you get a really good fit and that it reinforces the subframe in all the correct places to prevent cracking. So if you want to learn a bit more about the chassis and the subframe and the problems of cracking and that sort of thing, I did a video earlier on that subject so you can click the link above or over here and uh, watch that at the end of this video. So I'm going to put this back, I just wanted to show you so that I know where it is when it comes time to weld it in. Well that didn't go to plan, I've got a flat battery on the bike, it must admit it's been what, three or four weeks since I've fired it up so... <laughs> Anyway, get that on the battery charger and we'll get that sorted out, no problems. I've got the uh, bike out of the way, so now I can get access to the front door so I can start getting this insurer ripped out. Sorry about the light guys, and sorry about the background noise. Old mate across the road, in typical fashion, has decided now's a good time to mow his lawn, so there's a bit of lawn mower going. Screwdriver, you need a couple of screwdrivers, just a flat blade screwdriver to get the airbag out. I've only done this a couple of times and it's not easy. Basically there's a couple of springs that you've got to sort of press in from a couple of tiny little holes and then it's all just feel and touch to compress those springs so that you can get the airbag out. So probably 15 minutes it's taken me just to get this out. So anyway, hopefully the rest of the disassembly goes much smoother. Why am I As you can see, it's another day, and the strip out of the interior has been tedious. Trying to work out which piece comes out first before you can get access to screws and nuts and bolts has been, yeah, frustrating. But anyway, it's what I expected, so it's nothing new, really. The plan for today is just to keep going and, and get as much of this interior stripped out as I can. I don't have a lot of free time 
over the next few days. So the more I can get done today, yeah, the better. I'll get the tools out of the toolbox and we'll keep going getting this interior stripped out of the E46. So some doofus forgot to adjust his seat before he started ripping all the electricals out of the car. So I've got no battery, pretty much disassembled all the wiring harness to the ECU. And now I can get access to the rear bolts to pull the seat out. But the seat is so far forward that the rail is sitting over the bolts at the front. So I can't get a spanner or a socket in there to disconnect the front bolts. I'm going to have to come up with an idea to overcome this problem. I've got it. I know what I can do. What I'm going to do is hook up a couple of wires to my car battery, which has still got plenty of charge in it, and run it to those black connectors on the motor, which should ro roll the seat or wind the seat backwards or forwards. So all I've got to do really is work out which connector makes it go forward and which one goes back. So theoretically, this should work and it should work really well. Fingers crossed, because otherwise I don't know what I'm gonna do. <laughs> Yeah, it should work. Can't see why it wouldn't. It's just an electric motor. Anyway, let's see what happens, eh? It might not be no crossroad, but it's sure enough for four. Like left to LA, or right to New York. Like stepping on the gas, or taking it real slow. I can't believe that worked. Um, yeah, those wires were starting to get a bit hot. Um, I only, as I say, needed to move back an inch, which is what it's done. So, uh, awesome. Now I should be able to get the seats out, and now I know how to address the problem on the passenger side if I have the same issue. Awesome. Call me the joker. Call me the fool. When she calls. But there's nothing easy about ripping the interior out of a car, particularly the dash. And if you've not done it before, it's just a puzzle. Basically, you've got to disassemble it in the reverse order that it goes in. There are certain things which need to come out first, which then give you access to the screws to remove something else. So kind of piecing all that together and working it out is really time consuming but you've just got to be patient with it if it's not moving there's generally a reason why it's generally because there's a screw or a clip or something holding it in place so grab a torch like i've had to do and investigate it the best you can before you start prying things and what have you and that way you won't hopefully damage anything plastic that can be expensive to replace so i still got a little a fair bit to do i've already got one box of bits filled up and uh, we'll keep going we're going away to get your back, check the tag, decision is made, lock your door, need no more, it's already paid, cancel your mail for a while, it's a journey for life and I'm your wife, hang on, we'll be long gone, hang on, I can't So, as the sun sets quietly to the west in the 64 Motorsport garage, I think that's a job well done. That's pretty much where I wanted to get to at this stage of the strip out. Uh, obviously, still what's to come is the dash has got to come out the carpet, those wiring harnesses, and I'll probably pull the steering column as well. Just getting everything ready 
for welding in the subframe but at this stage I also want to get prepped for installing a roll cage as well. So I haven't done a final decision in terms of which roll cage or what roll cage setup I'm going to go for yet. Still got a bit of research to do to ensure that the roll cage I get is going to be suitable for the class of racing and hill climb events that I'm going to be doing. In the next E46 video I'm going to finish doing the strip out, get those last few bits and pieces organised and run through what the plans are for the interior in terms of upgrades that I'm going to be making there. So stay tuned for that. So if you want to get caught up on that please remember to subscribe but don't forget to ring the bell because it's the bell that gives you the notification when I upload my future videos. This Friday also I've got another episode of 5 Minute Fridays coming up and this one's just a little bit different so keep your eye out for that. If you've enjoyed the video please smash that like button if that's the sort of thing you like doing and also don't forget to leave us some comments if you've got anything that you'd like to contribute that might be helpful for our other viewers please don't forget to post a comment below as always thank you very much for watching i really really appreciate you taking the time to watch my videos but until we meet again look after yourselves stay safe and ttfm you know i filmed this over about four days no oh, actually it's been a week a little bit here a little bit there so yeah if you think this is easy <laughs> a lot of time mate